everybody, Jay Buzzsaw 79 here with the Elementalist in the Academy and uh, we're going to just jump right into it here. So first up, our new mage, in case you haven't read about it. So uh, we got uh, whenever an Elementalist casts a spell, uh, he's trained in, he may activate a glyph that affects the school, uh, the spell. Uh, so obviously if you cast water, it affects water and so on. Uh, he's trained in all the elements. Living objects cost triple. Uh, makes sense. Um, even for novice though, so I mean, yeah. But uh, he's also 43 points, so the normal 40. And uh, I'll just read the glyphs to you. So when he activates air, once per round when a creature you control makes an attack, you may pay one mana, and if you do deactivate this glyph to gain plus four on the uh, attack's effect roll. Earth, uh, once per round when a creature you control is attacked, you may pay one mana if you do deactivate this glyph, and that creature gains plus two armor for that attack. Fire, once per round when a creature you control makes an attack, you may pay one mana if you do deactivate this glyph, and that attack rolls two additional attack dice. And finally, water. Once per turn during upkeep phase, you may pay one mana if you do deactivate this glyph and heal two damage from the mage. Uh, I think the glyph thing is pretty freaking cool already. Um, I would really love to see him as an arena mage because I just think that's just just freaking awesome uh, <coughs> by itself. So. So yeah, so there's our, our new mage. All right. So next up, we're gonna get into uh, the conjurations here. Uh, we'll do. Let's see. I'm gonna start with this side. Here. So we're gonna have two dense fogs and two hellscape. All right. Uh, so the dense fog over here, object in a zone uh, cannot be targeted by anything but themselves. So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, it, it buys around, I mean, if they moved in or whatever last round and intended to kill you, throw some dense fog their way. Uh, it does dissipate one, so I think that's not too bad. It's interesting, it's air and water. Um, so, uh, I noticed a lot of these elemental ones are in fact multiples or have aura, uh, so you can activate the glyphs. Um, if you cast one, by the way, so like either one of these here, if it has, um, double elements on it, like, like dense fog here, you get to activate both air and water glyphs then. Um, if it says aura... And that's it. Instead, you have to pick which of the two glyphs you want to activate. So only with the and you get both credits. Uh, Hellscape here. Uh, flame attacks against objects in this zone. Roll an extra die at the beginning of the upkeep phase. Place a burn count on all creatures and conjurations in the zone that already have burn condition. Hydro attacks against Hellscape. Roll two additional attack dice. Um, I think it's pretty decent. Um, I mean, it sucks that it's conjuration and not like I don't want to say it like uh, like actual terrain as far as uh, you know the shallow sea and things like that. Um, you can attack like elephant grass. You can. You know, this you can. Um, Burn condition on everything uh, is always huge. Um, I can totally see, uh, especially the female lock, using this to great effect. Everything's got a burn on it. She can shuffle them around. Um, yeah. I mean, if you only get this off once, you know, um, that's huge. Huge. Uh, I got something that's swarmy, like uh, a Beastmaster. Yeah, that's... 
And of course all the flame attacks get plus one extra dice. So that's that's crazy too. So super good card. I really like the hellscape here. I think it's pretty dang powerful. So two of two of those and two of the dense fog. Alright, uh, next up we got two of those and two of these in here as well. Uh, ice spikes, it melts, um, and then melting uh, says that uh, the object is degraded over time. Objects with the melting X trait take direct X damage during upkeep phase. So, uh, it says when a non frost creature enters the zone, it receives two points of direct frost damage. Uh, and then flame attacks get plus two on it. Um, it's not bad, I guess I could see it more. I don't like enters the zone like yeah you know, why does that happen in discord like does that mean like uh, you know with pillar if you summon something you know to a zone that's not the same as entering the zone so And zone activates. So, I mean, it's not horrible, but it's really not that good either. It's, it's kind of mediocre for me. Um, so it's only gonna last three turns, unless you decide to guard it, I suppose. Uh, thunderstorm. It's a three dice, five up stagger, ethereal. Uh, when a display token is removed, it makes the above attack on target creature in its own. So this is kind of like a pillar for, uh, Are Acad Academy. Uh, use another one for Arena, so that's not too bad. I don't mind. It's three dice, so I mean, it is one less, but Staggers, man, I'm telling you, Staggers are crazy. They helped me out, uh, recently in a game and super, super good for me. So, can't say enough good things about Stagger. Uh, moving on. There's some more of these. We got ourselves a Volcano. Uh, freeze Weapon. I have to do those two. Um, so, Freeze Weapon first. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Um, increase the... Freeze weapons cost by two if the target equipment is level two. This equipment is disabled and cannot be replaced. So, and it has a five health on it. So basically, you're looking at I mean, it costs six to free something bigger. No stuff is only four. Uh, it's got the five health on I mean, it. It's not horrible uh, either. I kind of like the freeze weapon. That's pretty neat. Um, Mainly for what they got weapons, it's not going to take out armor, but yeah. Uh, volcano, Umbrella Burn, Lost to Spirit, Counter is removed from Volcano, it makes the above attack above before it was destroyed. So that is two. Um, all about Volcano, it's. When you cast it, even I cast it. So the first card comes off on my turn, uh, so it gives you a round even after that. It's a, it's a, so if you did prep for it, so the next round it's you, in fact, prep for it. Um, so I don't really like Volcano much, to be honest. Um, and you can still attack it. I think the zone would be probably better. Uh, I think it's more 
a lot more useful in uh, Academy than uh, Arena, personally. It looks pretty good. I'm excited for that. And finally, the last one here. Mana Shard. Flame Immunity. It's a 1 5 for 4. Uh, during the upkeep phase, one object with channeling in the zone may gain 1 mana. Um, that's pretty decent, I think. Uh, and why I say that is it, it's Earth. Uh, Warlord, you could plop this into a Warlord and not have to set up uh, your barracks. Like, I have to put a, you know, an outpost here and a, a thing there, and then I mean, you make your triangle thing. You don't have to do that. Uh, you can just cast this in the same zone as your barracks. That essentially has challenge plus one. And uh, I think this is going to be super good. I plan to add this to my Warlord right away. Uh, that says it's Earth. It is one spellbook point for him. Uh, I'm just super, super stoked about that one for me personally. Uh, Alright, so we're going to get this one next. We're going to go to some attack spells. We got the Cone of Frost here and Beam of Frost. And uh, so we're going to read this to you quick. So it says for the freeze a mechanic here, which is you got to freeze times two. A uh, character with the freeze condition rolls one less dice for non spell attacks. At the end of their activation, they remove one freeze condition from them if possible. Each freeze condition on a living creature is also considered two damage, which cannot be healed. If there are ever freeze conditions on an object with burn conditions, remove one of each since obviously you know the burn just freeze it it's gonna melt it kind of thing is my guess repeat this process until there are only burnt freeze or burns contained uh, on the on it uh this is a frost condition and has a removal cost of two uh and you read it also grants lumbering treat so Low fast movement, so that's interesting. Uh, so we we'll start with the Cone of Frost, it's a full round. Um, two dice. Sweeping, so you're hitting two people with two dice with eight of chance to freeze. That's not bad. So basically, if you hit, you can do, if you did max, and you get an H, obviously, with the effect. Uh, you essentially, you're doing eight damage or something. So that's insanely good. Uh, same amount, but a quick cast for the Beam of Frost. Um, same dice chance, but uh, too, too easier to get the freeze effect off. Um, I think I'd rather Beam of Frost than the Gold of Frost in most cases. Um, so... Not every case, but most. I mean, let's guess kind of how that one's going to be. All right, and we got ourselves a Gale Burst and Twister here. Uh, Gale Burst. Um, yeah, most of these, by the way, are two ofs. Um, like there's like three Gale Burst, and there's a three of the. Uh, Beam of Frost. I apologize, I usually say how many, but basically there's two. I'll start saying more here again, now that I remember. Alright, uh, Gale of Burst. It's a th wind spell, three attack ethereal. If a minor creature is damaged by it, uh, they're inactive. That is super handy already. I like that. Uh, so a level two or lower, just become inactive. Gale Burst rolls two additional dice versus flying. That's a five dice attack spell. Um, the range, who cares? Uh, you're basically the same as uh, oh, the light spell that's also range zero. I can't remember for the life of me. Uh, the ring you can put on there, which I have never had a chance to use on some of this stuff. 
make some wind stuff. I, I no one adds to the effect, but like, I think that's all that's all that adds to the uh, damage that I'm thinking about, so maybe that would just be a stupid idea. Uh, Twister, if a minor creature is damaged by a Twister, it becomes inactive also. Twister rolls two additional dice against it. It's a zone attack. Man, it's the most super good. Gale and Twister. Uh, there's only two Twisters and three Gales, though. So, I really like them both. I think they're both pretty neat. Um, I feel like this is kind of... I know, again, it's meant for only Arena. Or, or excuse me, Academy. But for Arena, yeah, this is going to be some interesting stuff. Uh, equipment. Now we're moving to... So we got two wands and two uh, uh, the amulets. What's per round when you have priority you can deactivate an amulet to gain two mana. Um, I think the elementalist is perhaps a little bit better than a druid in some aspects. Uh, I really like the mechanic. That's super neat. Uh, the wand here. Um, to mana to burn or freeze. Um, I mean, if, if they have only two health left, can you, I mean, you just freeze them? <laughs> Pay two mana to kill you? Like, guaranteed. That's pretty decent. Uh, so yeah, I'm liking both of these two. Obviously, the amulet's only good for academy, and, uh, not anywhere helpful for arena, but oh well. Dragon mantle and uh, the uh, elemental staff. Uh, the staff is elementalist only, uh, so we won't ever see it unless they make it useful for uh, arena, which I would love to see in a elementalist for arena. Dragon Mantle is one armor. I was per round when the mage is mainly attacked and damaged, but pay one mana to deactivate or deactivate fire glyph if you do. It's a burn. So actually, this is only going to be for Academy right now as well. Uh, so both of these are really, um, both really good though, I think, for Academy. Alright. Uh, we're going to do enchantments quick. There's only a couple. I'll just do this one first, the Deep Freeze. Target object, uh, object loses and cannot gain melting. Additionally, freeze conditions are not removed at the end of this creature's activation. Uh, so if you, you know, hit it with a freeze attack, activate this, they don't uh, get the melting effect. So that's... Uh, That's interesting. So this actually forms two things because you can use it to stop freeze conditions on things you've frozen. Uh, you can also place it on your ice golem, uh, which we'll talk about in a couple minutes here. It's kind of um, another meh kind of thing for me. There are three of those. Uh, there's also the frost trap and the tar trap. Frost says when a creature activates, it must reveal. Oh, this creature activates, you must reveal it. Place two freeze conditions on this creature, then destroy a frost trap. Uh, so basically there's four damage. So if you're in arena, it would do numbering. But that's also interesting to me. I look on the tower one. This way two, you must reveal it. Um, this creature activates as well. Um, Looks like she's really struggling with the other tire there. That's kind of crazy. Uh, this creature cannot take non spell actions. The flame attacks against this creature do additional damage. Uh, unless you are uncontainable creatures are immune to it. So, like, stuff for arena. You know, there's some stuff, of course, that is <coughs> uncontainable. So. These are interesting, but I don't like the fact you have to pay four for a reveal. That's a little bit much, I think. Um, if 
fact that they both essentially have dissipates that are falling off. So, all right, uh, creatures. Let's go right down the line. We got three rock golem and two tide elementals. Tide elemental, of course, is from the detergent. Um, so twelve uh, ignores non-critical attacks, which is resilience. Anybody's paying attention. Uh, is immune to burn. Frost attacks against it. Roll two additional dice, as well as a quick action. Uh, can remove all burns from one object. And this. Don't know about that last part. As a quick action, the elemental tie can remove all burn conditions from one object in this. Uh, I, I, I feel like Arcane Wonders kind of forgot the back half of a sentence there. Like, and there's not even a period. Like, there should be more you want to tell me. <laughs> uh, Rock Gold's pretty good. Like, yeah, I'm successfully like at four. Uh, so in that regard, it does suck, but beyond that, it's pretty decent, though. Uh, the water one is pretty cool. I just don't know what the hell he does there. It must be zone. They're supposed to be in this zone, and they didn't put zone, is what my guess is. So, uh, there's only four for the rock home, so that's pretty good. I mean, three armor, so... I'm going to kill him, but he's cheap, so that's kind of cool. Just threw a lot of the speed bump, maybe. I'll just hook up some attacks for level one. Uh, moving on, we got the uh, upside down. Mud Golem there, and the Megma Sprite. Frost attacks against him, roll two additional dice. It's not a Megma there. Yeah. So burn for five. Yeah. Okay, I guess. Uh, mud golem though, that's freaking crazy. So essentially, four out action. The add a counter. Only the other three. Uh, and for each counter you want to put on him, and he increases his life by two. And it's mainly by one. If you spend three full actions to power him up, he'll eventually have fifty health and five dice. Um, that's pretty freaking spectacular. Um, so there's lots of stuff you can do with that, I think. And, I mean, if I wait for uh, the chain demon there, Meg Megadon or Mcthyrodon, whatever the hell his name is, I, I could wait three for this too. Um, he's going to take damage, so that's really awesome. Um, moving right along, we got, of course, our Ice Golem we talked about earlier, uh, who has a 3 of chance to put Freeze out there. Um, it's 13, but he does melt at 2. Let's, of course, you need to cast the Deep Freeze on him, which will stop him from melting. Um, that's kind of cool. Uh, 2 extra dice gets Flame Attack, so he's not that bad, I don't think. I mean, it's just you cast Deep Freeze on him. I can see that being useful. Uh, the Galaga Gorma. Uh, you have to pay mana to keep him out. It's interesting. So, lightning Sprite, it says. Two days. Oh, I'm a try. It's only three mana. I mean, yeah, it's long term, but it's ethereal, so potentially got unlimited armor, so that's the thing. Um, next up, we got Frost Elemental and Diamond Golem. Diamond Golem, um, he basically prevents three damage. So you have to do four damage in a turn to actually do a damage to him. And all of his damage is critical damage. I think that's interesting. I think he's a little high cost though. Nine mana for that. Seems a little high, I would think. Like two mana less. 
um, to make it more interesting, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. Uh, and then, of course, right next to him, the Frost Elemental, who has 23 health, but also has Melting 2 with 5 dice. Uh, I think he's pretty awesome. Like, more so than the, uh, was it the ice one we just looked at, I think. Yeah. So, super stoked about that guy, too. I think he's going to be a lot of fun to hang out with and play around with. So, for 15, I think that's well in balance um, for things. And finally, there is a Acid Ooze. Again, two of him also. All these are twos, by the way, so far uh, inside here. So, uh, again, there's crit. So, three up chance to corrode those two dice. And, uh,. I was just reading that. So, I don't know. I mean, for eight, I think he's well balanced. I mean, it's a three up chance to corrode. I think that's pretty good for a freaking ooze, no matter what size it is. Speaking of, we're going on to these uh, incantations now. So there's three of this and three of Peevil. So, neutralize removes corrode conditions from the target. So, that could be any target, any object. So that's interesting to me, uh, because I mean that's something people do. They put a bunch of corrodes on something to try to bust through it. Um, that makes to me the uh, rust a little bit better. I want to go away from that stuff. So I think people can have probably one of these into most books. I don't see why not. You could probably throw two into. Druids into um, a, a Siren upheaval if target is level 1 and not up destroy it. The Conjuration's mana cost and the combined mana cost of any hidden enchantments on it. Um, level 1 not epic. Oriole Conjuration. I believe that includes the uh, terrain as well. So that could be, you know, something maybe there. You could pop terrain. I'm trying to check quick. Yeah, you can. That is a conjuration, and it's just simply says it's corporeal conjuration. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's Earth, too, so that's going to be real interesting how that all works out. A lot of stuff to take on conjurations, and I'm very pleased with that. I think it'll also be kind of nice again for being a warlord because uh, those are all Earth. So, out oh, rapid. Dismantle and one disperse with no uh, crumble, which is interesting to me. You get a rapid dismantle instead. Uh, choose two level one equipments and destroy them. Um, I mean, there's so many, why would you not run this? I mean, you know, people put on legs and you know, boots or you know, like you're taking on the warlord, his gloves and his belt. Well, screw that, pop them both. You know, wizard, uh, getting gloves and legs. Boom, done. Or the frickin', again, the warlord belt. So, pop them both, right? So there you go. That is a walkthrough of all the cards for the new set, for the Elementalist, uh, for Major Wars Academy. Thumbs up if you like this. Uh, thumbs down, of course, if you did not. Comments always welcome. Thank you much for watching. I appreciate it. It is Jay Bus uh, 79 signing off saying thank you much.